Good evening, everybody. It's great to be with you tonight for another evening devotion. It's Friday, and so I hope you're uh, having a relaxing evening finally this week. Um, tonight, uh, we're going to focus on 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, and this carries over really well from uh, what the Sunday readings were this previous weekend. So if you remember from Sunday, uh, this is the the Sunday where we hear about Jesus as the good shepherd who watches over his sheep. And we hear some comforting words from Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And Jesus talks about himself as the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep in John chapter 14. And, uh, and then that's the night before he goes to the cross. And so he's setting the disciples up to understand what the good shepherd does. Now, when Peter is writing, he is taking this idea of Jesus as the good shepherd and knowing that he has sent him, Peter, as an apostle, one who is to go out and spread the gospel and, uh, and then start uh, churches around the area, so places where they would be able to hear God's word and proclaim that word and share that word together, then Peter uses this word as of shepherd to talk about those who are serving then in these uh, different pockets, different places all around Asia Minor to, uh, to share the gospel in their communities and have congregations, churches in those places. And so now this is, you know, a little later in, uh, in so if, if Jesus died around 30 A.D., well, Peter's writing this letter around 67, 66, 67 AD. So this is 30 years of ministry later, 35 years of ministry later. And, uh, and this has been happening, right? He's been going out. Paul's been going out. There's been these places. Um, they're writing, he's writing this letter to other Christians who are going to be in these communities. Now, what do they do in this community with the person that is set up among them, whom they choose among them, whom they appoint among them, or Peter has helped to train up among them to serve as pastor, as shepherd, under the, un, under the good shepherd, Jesus. And so he uses this language that we get about Jesus to understand what pastors are called to do and how they're supposed to act in the life of a community of church. So going into uh, to chapter 5, um, Peter's going to do something that he's been doing throughout this letter. He's going to tell them, uh, and he's writing specifically to, to pastors here, to don't do this, but do this. Don't be this way, but be this way. Don't look for this, but look for this. So he, he, he does this a lot. You can go back into his letter and find lots of places where he says, uh, don't, but this is what you should do. So that's a, a, recurring, uh, a recurring theme, and that pattern continues today as Peter's writing to pastors. He talks about this idea of elder, and this is uh, one of the roots where we get the word, um, the, the foundation of what a pastor does. And so this doesn't mean elders like we have at St. Paul, like those who um, serve as elders in the congregation who help out the pastor in some way. He's actually, when, when this word elder is used, he means those people who are called as pastors, and he also uses the word shepherd here. Another term that can be used is overseers uh, in the New Testament too. So all those are meaning the same thing. So he's writing in chapter 5, verse 1. He says, So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and as a witness of the suffering of Christ as well as a partaker of the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you. Exercising oversight. All right, we'll, we'll pause there at, at those two verses because that um, at, at one and a half verses. So uh, he's writing as a witness, right? He's saying, hey, I have seen Jesus in the flesh and I followed him. And so I am a witness to you as to all these things that are happening and what Jesus has done. And so that's why I have, I've inst I have instilled these things in you so that you can lead people up in these same things. I've been a witness. So I'm, I'm, I have a different perspective maybe than you do, but I'm also uh, a partaker of the glory that is going to be revealed 
And in that way, he's just like everyone else. He's just like these fellow pastors that he's writing to. And he's encouraging them and telling them, hey, this is how you are to be uh, people who oversee the group of Christians that God has placed you over. I am a fellow saved one with you. So what should you do? Shepherd the flock. Lead and care for the congregation. Lead them with the word of God. Lead them to see their Savior in the gospel. That is your calling, shepherd. You want the, the sheep to find green pasture where they are fed and nourished and refreshed and brought into their Savior's presence so that they would see the good shepherd and, and do it this way. So then he gets into this uh, what they're to do and what not to do. So there's this oversight that's happening. So the, the kind of like the, the pastor helps make sure that the gospel proclamation is happening in the congregation and, and reveals that to others. Not under compulsion. So we get three not buts here. Not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. Not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Not domineering over those in your charge but being examples of the flock. So these three, first of all, he says, not with compulsion, but eagerly. And maybe it was because there were some people who they were trying to lift up as elders and they're like, uh, no, I don't want to do that. That's kind of a hard job. Like it's it's not easy. There, There's a lot of um, training. I need these things I maybe feel like I don't know. So I don't know if I could do this job. It's also hard to care for all these people and to watch out for um, some of the, the cautions that, uh, that Peter is going to make a little further in this, uh, this letter as he's looking out for um, Satan and his attacks and those who uh, would come up and, and bring in false teaching. We know this is a problem in the New Testament. Martin Luther writes about this when he's talking about pastors and reflecting on this section specifically here. He says, A pastor must not only lead to pasture by teaching the sheep how to be true Christians, but in addition to this, he must also repel the wolves, lest they attack the sheep and lead them astray with false doctrine and error. error. For the devil does not rest. Now today one finds many people who cannot let the gospel be preached, provided that one does not cry out against the wolves and preach against the prelates. But even if I preach in the right way and tend and teach the sheep, this protecting and guarding does not suffice to keep the wolves from coming and leading the sheep astray. For what is built if I lay stones and watch someone else knock them down. Saying this is it's not just you proclaiming, but you also have to speak out when things are wrong. And that's the hard thing I think for for pastors today uh or Christians today for us as uh the body of Christ to say mm, that actually isn't right when we're talking about Christ. We want to proclaim these specific things as true to hold on to the the gospel in the in the best way so that it is proclaimed freely and everyone would understand it as this free gift as it is. Works is one of those things that, that comes in and, and messes up the gospel in many ways. So um, he's saying don't do it uh, out of compulsion but willingly because uh, this is God's calling to you. So God, when, when you have the calling of God, then go. Go as you are sent in this calling. Um, not for shameful gain, but eagerly. Obviously, uh, we can see examples of the shameful gain type of preachers or teachers in the Christian church and what's wrong with that and uh, where that comes into play. And, uh, and so Peter's eagerly helping them see this is not the way that you are to be as um, as people who are leading the 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 church and and leading them into um, to Christ you're you're doing doing this for yourself if you're doing it that way for monetary gain so do this eagerly uh, so that it is work that is done showing Christ like that is your desire so that others would see Jesus not so that you rise up in either social status or um, or your your bank account is full no do it out of proclaiming Christ eagerly that way and do it so that others would hear this good news and uh, and be filled with this uh, gospel as his church Finally, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples of the flock. And sometimes this is the, the tricky danger that happens in churches too. Pastors try to 
you know, take hold of their congregation or, you know, oversee too much. And that can be um, a tempting thing to do, especially if you think your flock is going astray, then you sometimes squeeze in a little too much. No, it needs to be done with gentleness and respect, as, as Peter was talking about when we talk about the gospel to others. This is how we do it, as uh, God's people leading others to see him, and especially as an example here as servants, as models of what it means to care for the church and care for one another. And so when a pastor serves as a servant, as a pastor is a model of the Christian faith to the rest of the congregation, then that's fulfilling what Peter's uh, reminding them is their calling here. Finally, uh, when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. And he's writing this to, to pastors here in, this, um, in that specific calling, saying, I know it's a tough job. Please don't do it this way because that's not going to fulfill the work of Jesus that he's calling you to do. But when you do it this way, it's going to bring out the, the kingdom of God in an amazing way. And the good news is you're going to also be filled with the, the gospel as you are using it to proclaim it. And then your inheritance in the kingdom of God is also going to be great because of this. So he points to the good shepherd Jesus as the one whom we're waiting for. And, uh, and reminding pastors also, as he's calling them shepherds, you're not the good shepherd. There is one good shepherd who watches over the sheep. You are an under-shepherd. So use that calling, though, to proclaim who the good shepherd is. And so in these do-nots, or don't do this, but work this way, whenever we read them, uh, whenever P Peter has been talking about them, and we read them and, and struggle with them as Christians and say, oh, it's so hard for me to do the right thing and reject these wrong things. Ultimately, every time he's pointing them to see Jesus as the one who fulfills that perfect calling, rejecting those things, but coming to live out this life. And so as we talked about, Jesus is first the one who gives us his grace as gift. And then he is the example of how we are to live. And he does this as a shepherd, too, leading pastors. And so I pray that you would continue to pray for me as a pastor, that you would continue to pray for Pastor Neundorf at St. Paul, that you would, uh, if you're a member of another congregation, that you would continue to pray for your pastor or other pastors that you know, uh, that God would lead them to do this work so that his kingdom would be proclaimed in so many great ways. We're going to sing a hymn tonight that reflects on that idea that we as the church are praying for, uh, for those who God calls to this shepherd, uh, this under-shepherd office, and, uh, and uses them in that specific ways in, in churches and congregations around the world. And that hymn is called Send, O Lord, Your Holy Spirit. It's, a, it's an ordination or an installation type hymn uh, when a new pastor is coming into a congregation. And it is uh, meant to be one that the congregation sings to encourage that pastor to, uh, to work and serve faithfully, knowing that the Good Shepherd and the Spirit whom he sends is the one who's going to work through that, um, that broken vessel but is going to do his work in amazing ways. So we're going to sing stanzas one and two of 681 in the um, Lutheran service book. Send, O Lord, your Holy Spirit. Number 681, stanzas one and two. Send, O Lord, your Holy Spirit, on your servant now we pray. Let him prove a faithful shepherd, that no lamb be led astray. Your pure teaching to proclaim, to extol your holy name, and to feed your lambs, dear Savior, make his aim and soul endeavor. You, O oh Lord, yourself have called him, for your precious lambs to care. But to prosper in his calling, he the Spirit's gifts must share. Give him wisdom from above, fill his heart with holy love. 
In his weakness, Lord, be near him. In his prayers, good shepherd, hear him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for your flock, your church around the world. And we pray for under shepherds that you place in their care, that you place among them, that they would be ones who faithfully share your word and point to Jesus. Jesus, be our good shepherd. Show us how you have lived and died and risen for us so that we would also walk in your footsteps and proclaim you among this world. God, we ask that you would continue to raise up uh, faithful shepherds and teachers and church workers in, uh, in our church and throughout your world that your gospel would be proclaimed through them. And we thank you, Lord, for sending laborers into your harvest that your word would go out faithfully and fully. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.